collective sun, moon, rising, Venus signs. Welcome to your soulmate contract read for September 2020 or timeless whenever you are catching this. I am your reader, Mark Angela Lyons, Mel for short, professional witch, professional intuitive, president of Drawing the Circle Productions, the Archangel of Lyons, Mark Angela Lyons. But you can call me Mel. Hey, hey, hey. Welcome back, my subscribers. Thank you so much for following along. Love you guys so much. The feedback that I'm getting, a lot of us are uh, are making new friends on the Mark Angelo Lyons uh, Mal for short private Facebook group. We're a lot of fun over there, uh, and I try and live stream there every day just from my phone. So uh, making good friends as we go along. So thank you for your love and support, guys. And if you are new to my channel, like the video if you like it. I wouldn't ask a Scorpio to do something that they did not feel like they truly wanted to do deep in their souls, right? Uh, but if you want some more, certainly subscribe, hit the notification bell. Uh, I'm playing with the times that I uh, put these out. I'm doing them the day before, particularly with an extended read like for this series. Uh, so uh, playing with that, seeing when it's best received, you know, whatever, you got to do the marketing angle of it too. Uh, that being said, let's get up in this gig. This is a soulmate contract read. We will be doing Divine Feminine and Divine Masculine, party number one. Party number two never has to do with biological uh, gender on my channel or sexual preference or anything like that. In some reads, I'm the Divine Feminine, I find, and some I'm the Divine Masculine, uh, depending on Twin Flame Soulmate, you know, all those different uh, dynamics. Uh, but this is a soulmate read, not a Twin Flame. There is a difference. There are some links in the description description box. If I go into it every single time I'm doing one of these readings, I go out of my mind. So just check the links down there. A soulmate contract, you're helping each other heal. They're not all sexual romantic, but these reads are for the happy, healthy, wealthy, wise, uh, intimate sexual uh, soulmate contracts. They're satisfying and they're symbiotic, and those are the ones everybody wants to know about, but keep in mind, my mother and I are a soulmate contract, right? Just as my father and I were twin flame. Cool, you got it. Uh, let's get up in this. All the decks that I read are in the description box below. Remember, this is a general read, right? Take what resonates, leave what doesn't, because you may find yourself reflected in both sides of this. It does happen. But this is really a reading. The guides really t t turned the party on, on me a little bit this time. They said, look, this reading is really about how whoever is watching these reads, if it resonates for them, what they can heal within themselves to manifest a happier, healthier, wealthier, wiser soulmate contract in the romantic sexual genre, right? And that's what people, so many people want, and I get it. And, and so this is a way through the quantum entanglement of soulmate contracts. That's what they showed me over the weekend before I started doing these. There's a quantum entanglement. As one soulmate heals themselves, whether they know each other or not, or in contact with each other or not, it, it, they're helping each other heal. They can't not, right? Entanglement, isn't that fascinating? So that's what we're going to do. We're going to look at the, the the contract aspect of this quantum entanglement. Uh, we're going to start with the Carolyn Mace uh, archetype card. Stay focused on your breath. I'll do the same. Let's see what I can get you. Uh, 13 cards, a skeleton that, believe me, in the extended reads, we've been going deep into. So you should know by the end of this whether or not it's for you. And if you want to go deeper, you can. Cool. Oh, and if I forget, there's a preview at the end when I sign off. I pop up. The first five, six minutes, you can check it out, because this is kind of fun for me as a producer. <laughs> Ready? Breathe. <sighs> Great God Almighty. All of that exposition, but you gotta, right? Preambles and whatnot. Oh, please, my collective pantheons of angels, goddesses, gods. Ascended masters of soulmate contract law and the higher selves of all concerned, please. I need two cards, two Caroline Mace archetype cards. Uh, one for the Divine Feminine and one for the Divine Masculine in this Scorpio collective. Sun, Moon, Rising, uh, Venus sign, Happy, Healthy, Wealthy, Wise, Intimate, Sexual, Soulmate, Contract. September 2020 or timeless and when I was uh, blessing the cards beforehand because I do breath work and prayer before every single reading um, not so much in between the, the YouTube and the Vimeo I will say that because I literally click off the camera and practically click it right back on 
but the vibe that I got that there's, I'm feeling that depth of Scorpio, that money, sex, and power, like there's money involved in this, I'm feeling that, so let's really get into this, please. My collective pantheons, who's the divine feminine in this Scorpio soulmate, and who's the divine masculine, please just put them right in my hand, there we go, that was fast, kind of, sort of, roundabout way, now remember, these can be triggery, they list the shadow and the light of each soul power being developed, but it's good to know what the shadow is, because that's what you're helping each other heal. As you heal it within yourself, you're helping them heal theirs. Quantum entanglement of soulmate contracts, like that's that's what set these readings forth and why we're doing it so differently this time. And what a romantic couple. In a sense, catch the words I'm about to say. Everybody has the child archetype. The child, the victim, the saboteur, and the prostitute are the survival family of archetypes. Everybody has those, right? Even nations have those. Companies have those. So the child archetype is the guardian of innocence. And in a happy, healthy, wealthy, wise, intimate, sexual, romantic, it's the child of your heart, that innocence, that trusts to love. Well, you got the child archetype, but you've got the magical child, the divine feminine, if you are, I should say, um, uh, the uh, the Scorpio uh, Divine Feminine. If you are the Scorpio Divine Masculine, you've got the Knight, the K-N-I-G-H-T. So, uh, the magical child in the night. There's a lot of romance here. There's a lot of romance here. Now, get, get that what we're talking about here is that inner child, that child that magical heart within us that believes in romance. In fact, let's do this. The shadow attribute Everybody deals with this if they have the magical child. Like, if you're still into Harry Potter at this, and as am I, right? Because he's a, a really good example of the orphan child that uh, also evolves into the magical child. It's all. Forever young. Uh, the shadow attribute, pessimism, depression, and disbelief in miracles, right? When that child is just like burned out, as certainly uh, one could be burned out on the path of true love in terms of twin flames and soulmates and all of that. Believing that energy and action are not required for growth, which does tap into magical thinking. You know, babies are allowed to have magical thinking because they cry and they get fed and they cry and they get changed. So after a while, it's like, oh, everybody knows what I need. That doesn't age well. If you haven't noticed, it is a thing. It's called magical thinking, right? That work is not required. Everybody's just going to know. And somehow it's all going to work out, which I think the New Age has gone through. Uh, I think witches know better at this point, but the New Age is a different story. Uh, the light attribute. Uh, seeing the potential for sacred beauty in all things, a belief that everything is possible, right? So now you put that in context of soulmates, of all things. Oh, that somehow it'll all work out, but is it not someday my prince will come, but that I will be rescued by a knight, a K-N-I-G-H-T. Now, really, could you get more divine feminine, divine masculine, just in the artwork? But remember, this is not about biology. If you see this only through the lenses of physiological gender, right, biological gender, you could miss this entirely. So really, tune yourself to this. Because the knight archetype, like think even the dark knight, right, the K-N-I-G-H-T, the shadow attribute, allegiance to a destructive ruler or principle, romantic delusions. Oh no, romantic delusions. Oh, who doesn't have those in terms of dealing with soul contracts in contemporary time? Nah, please, epidemic proportion. Oh, I guess I shouldn't use those words, huh? Uh, light attribute, loyalty, romance, and chivalry, a love of honor. So as toxic as they are, toxic AF in the shadow is as beautiful and bright and miraculous and honorable. This is this is the kind of soulmates people want, but understand when the child archetype is involved, once the, the child, if you are really doing the inner child work, and I'm, I'm kind of speaking specifically to if the divine feminine is, is the magical child, here, which I get a sense a good chunk is going to be, that as we go through this, really check in with that child. Talk to it like you're babysitting someone in your heart, but it's, uh, it's your innocence and holds the, the keys to, um, if you like, the pin codes to your deeper success, to opening your heart and manifesting stuff. 
as you are ready and maturing into. So I have to say, fascinated. I mean, I have like Scorpio, and uh, sorry, I have um, uh, Neptune and Scorpio. Like that, we ain't doing those kind of reads today. But I'm very excited to see this. I have a feeling the extended's going to be rather interesting. <laughs> Take a nice deep breath. Okay, my angels and archangels, you're a bit more businesslike than I was expecting. Please, can I have two cards? One for the divine feminine uh, magical child here, and one for the divine masculine knight. By the way, the masculine family, if I didn't say that, this is the survival family. Everybody's got those. Everybody's got a masculine family archetype, but this is uh, the knight in particular. Please, who are the angels that walk with them, that are helping them, sort of assigned to this case, so to speak, this soulmate contract, this happy Scorpio collective sun, moon, rising, Venus sign, happy, healthy, wealthy, wise, sexual, intimate, romantic soulmate contract, one for the divine feminine, please, and one... Thank you for the divine masculine. They said they're going to make the draws very, very easy this time. Good. I appreciate it. Uh, so, who's walking with the magical child? Well, is friendship. So, what would the angel of friendship do? Certainly introduce you to soul contracts and type of friends, and maybe that's how these two have met or are starting out, if they have not met yet. Uh, uh, also, yes, of course, being friendly with themselves, being friendly and dis... In, uh, in terms of uh, disposition to life in general, and something that certainly you can see a magical child being. The child archetype is the guardian of innocence and safety. There, there is so much to unpack there that we just can't in this moment. Right? Read Sacred Contracts, study with Carolyn Mace every opportunity you get. Just good, uh, a, value, a, va a valuable co counsel there for sure. Um, but really does say that she's coming about this in more of a friendly way. I can feel it. That magical child and maybe this like, oh, okay, well, we'll just see how it goes. So if that's you, I get this. This could be tricky. Uh, well, and here we have the card of nature, the angel of nature. So this could be a real, I'm just sort of getting the divine masculine that likes to go camping. Do you know what I'm saying? <laughs> like likes to just be out there in the woods or at the beach or whatever, just like like real in in the body physical. Now, as as much as I can think of many men like that that have been in my life, I can think about just as many women in my life who will gladly pack up their uh, their SUV and and take off to the mountains or to the beach at the drop of a hat. I live on Long Island, so you know more beach than mountain. <laughs> there really are no mountains on Long Island, though I say all the time I live in the mountainous region. It's just the highest point. Uh, the closest I could get to Olympus, right? Um, uh, that, that angel of nature. I like these two a lot. Let's see how those angels play out through this, because the magical child with friendship, lovely for the divine feminine. I feel an openness there, right? And for this night with nature, as, as much as, yes, I, I often say there's something in this card about discovering one's true nature, but one's true nature would be more the light uh, than the shadow, the lead than the gold, right? Not the illusion, but the truth. So let's uh, keep going, as now we're going to bring in two different oracles from the same company, though. Uh, the Quan Yin Oracle and the Blue Angel Oracle dedicated to Archangel Michael. Um, uh, yes, very much Divine Feminine, Divine Masculine, but the cards that I get for each of them will be for the contract in and of itself, right? So it's both of them. Uh, you know how I like to do a, a middle lane, right? Like her, him, and them, right? So uh, so let's see what I can get for you here. We're going to start with Quan Yin. Ladies first. Take a nice, deep breath. I love this deck. Oh, oh, thank you. She just went relax. It's been a busy day. Relax. I just relax. Thank you. Kuan Yin, please, one card in clarity for uh, this Scorpio Collective, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus sign, happy, healthy, wealthy, wise, intimate, sexual, soulmate contract uh, for this magical child, divine feminine who walks with the angel of friendship and uh, this divine masculine knight archetype who walks with the angel of nature please what is your your blessing your 
guidance, your grace, your clue, your tip, your hint for them in this soulmate contract, September 2020, or timeless. This is the one. The Dance Unveiling. I know this one. I don't know these by heart yet, and I kind of don't want to, because reading them out of this, I just read the beginning and the ending of what's written in here. There's a lot more in there. Uh, but this is definitely things are being revealed little by little by little. The Dance Unveiling. Right. Pretty cool. Card number 36. Now, I do have my magnifier if I need it as the day goes on. Teeny, tiny, itty, bitty little castle <laughs> uh, uh, print. And one day, the princess found that the prince... The Dance Unveiling, card number 36. There is a situation in your life that is about to reveal itself to you with greater clarity. Okay. Just like sands shifting, the picture will seem clearer and quite different to how it once appeared to you. The clarity will bring you great relief and confirmation of your intuition. Be patient and allow the revelation to come to you at the perfect time. All right, so that's a, a clear message. And there is a prayer at the end. I find the prayers to be particularly uh, moving, uh, but you know, I consider myself a divine feminine, so I wouldn't I, Quan Yin. Uh, so take a big deep breath just for a minute. And Quan Yin, please. Oh, my hand started shaking. Beloved Quan Yin, I now let go of any fear that would distort my perception and prevent me from beholding the highest levels of truth which I am capable of perceiving. Help me now, beloved one, with your divine dance of mercy and compassion that the confusion may clear, any distortion may be released, and the truth be revealed with grace and simplicity. Unveil the truths with your dance of grace, beloved. Thank you. Omani Padme Hum. Scorpio, things are being... Uh, revealed and unveiled. Now, I really get the feeling because it's the dance unveiling. If you just feel the vibe of the card of what Kuan Yin's talking about here, this isn't, um, this isn't necessarily a fast process. It is a dance. It is a dance. It is not a rush. So that's for both sides here, right? Uh, things are being revealed here, and that's what we're here for uh, in a reading is to get an energy read on this. So that feels definitely the hidden stuff, right? The feminine. Let's ask Archangel Michael to find masculine, which to me is a totally different vibe because I turn into a 15-year-old girl when I talk to him because he's beautiful. Breathe. <laughs> One more. Oh, nice hit of Archangel Michael. Hi, Archangel Michael, please. Uh, beloved Angel of the South, powers of fire, hot as can be. Please, one card in clarity. For the Scorpio Collective, Sun, Moon, Rising, uh, Venus signs in this happy, healthy, wealthy, wise, intimate, sexual, romantic, satisfying soulmate contract, um, September 2020 or timeless please we've got uh the child the magical child with the angel of friendship the knight with the divine masculine knight with the the angel of nature and with something being unveiled it says kuan yin please what would you add to this please your piece of archangelic guidance and grace september 2020 and this card just came up in the last reading for so uh for libra so if you got any libra stuff going on well it's the same card it's only one card down uh acceptance peace angel right and that's what i love about this deck i say it every time that they do cards in landscape which i just think is magnificent why that hasn't happened a billion times before i don't know but there you have it and i want to do an oracle like them i do it'd be some oracle <laughs> Oh, sorry, I need the card. I got uh, the book for the card. Uh, and we are looking at number four, right? I just read this one, so it is fresh in uh, my mind. Acceptance is the key word, card number four. Peace, angel. You will find peace when you learn to love and accept yourself as you are. 
How you see yourself usually determines how others see you and react to you. So what you see in the world around you is really your own reflection. Uh, Greg Braden, Seven is Seen Mirrors. You can find it on YouTube. Trust me, there's more than just that mirror. Uh, surrender your negative thoughts. Your fear, hurt, and anger can be healed through love. Holding on to these emotions serves no purpose other than to keep you stuck in a cycle of pain and suffering. Now, before we go any further here, I know we are. I am talking essentially to Scorpio energy that can withhold and hold emotional energy down deep beneath the surface for a very, very long uh, time. There are great mysteries and secrets down in there that are worth treasuring and protecting, but then there's also, uh, as we know, that hurt child <laughs> within us that needs more love, uh, not less. So it's not about letting that child run the show, particularly if we're talking about the magical child that may not be getting what it wants. Oh, the depression, the pessimism, the mayhem that that child can create in our lives, right? Disbelief in miracles. There is no meaning to any of this. There is no higher plan. You get what I'm talking about, right? So there's something here about even accepting those voices, because those voices aren't just yours or your inner child. That's billions of people on the planet right now if you look at where the world is. So if there's any empathic skill there, and yes, I'm talking to the Divine Feminine Magical Child, or that where the knight might be like, let's go kick ass anyway, right? Uh, so accept and love yourself as you are without condition. It's exactly what I just said. Count your blessings and not your faults. Let your beautiful heart be filled with light. When you let go of your desire to change things, a beautiful transformation occurs. Just be love. Uh, just be love. Um, um, and a quote from Walt Whitman, peace is always beautiful. So there's an acceptance there, a really, really uh, uh, beautiful acceptance. I'm really feeling for the magical child and being friendly, that might be in play there. Um, but because it's coming for the night, I mean, when you think of knights, K and I, G H D, don't you think of like Archangel Michael? Like of all the other archangels, you don't think of any of them else necessarily having the knights of Archangel Michael, right? Saint Michael. There's definitely that feeling there, that loyalty, that tenacity. So, uh, so things are being unveiled. Let's keep going. I find this a very, very interesting one because of just the out and out. Um, uh, a sense of the magical that's part of a soulmate contract right with the magical child and the not it's just it, there's something very classic about it like if you take it out of the words of the magical child and call it for for example um I don't know, the damsel, but there's that's an archetype unto itself. It's the innocence of the heart. It, it, it's, uh, this is very, very uh, interesting. So what we're going to do is we're going to get some tarot narrative here, right? That's enough oracle for right now. Thank you very much. Let's get, um... A five-card relationship spread. You'll see how it hits the table, but from the goddesses, the divine yin. Remember, there's an extended. So we are going to clarify these in a very specific way in the extended with uh, the mythic tarot, the voices of the divine masculine, the yang. So we're going to look more at the internal stuff here, because at this point, this reading will help you heal and manifest this soulmate contract on your end, again, through the quantum entanglement. So it's more important what's going on on the inside in the extended we'll look at what's look going on on the outside right so nice deep breath mm. i feel that here we go here's this feeling of power and wealth and there's money in here please uh my goddesses uh five card relationship spread the basic bare bones so that we can uh, add to them, please, one card in clarity for this uh, magical child in this Scorpio collective Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus sign soulmate contract, September 2020 or timeless. One card to represent her. One card to represent the Divine Masculine Knight in this Scorpio Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus sign collective soulmate contract, September 2020, or timeless, thank you. What is the root chakra 
of this relationship. The bottom line is if someone were to ask, what's going on here? What's the bottom line? What is the root chakra of this thing? Uh, what is the crown chakra, the eagle eye view? As if we were to see it from our higher selves point of view, just at the moment. Not exactly an outcome, but a, a higher point of view. I'll take that one. And then what is the initial outcome here? Uh, uh, and part of it must involve landscapers who I thought were done already, but I guess they're not. That's okay. Cope. Breathe. Yes, my goddesses, there you are. Please, yes, just one card. What is the initial outcome, right? Just for this month, this this uh, September 2020 or timeless when they are watching this. Okay, here, let's get up in this. The Divine Feminine has the Capricorn card. The Divine Masculine, the Nine of Blades, the Nine of Swords. So I can feel that even though this is a magical child uh, walking with the Angel of Friendship, that is in a place of Capricornian energy. Now, I, this represents her, right? So it's sort of like a tarot version of the magical child uh, archetype here. That There is a slow and steady wins the race. There is a maturity here. It feels like there are boundaries here. I also get the feeling that there is that exhaustion that lends itself to that sadness and that depression, right? Like, this has been a long road. The romantic thing, like, there's been a lot of back and forth between believing that everything has a plan and it's all going to work out. I'm sure someday Leo and Piper will get together, you know what I mean? Like that, kind of like, you know that, it, right? You hope for that. And then that, no, who does that ever really going to happen for? So kind of kind of feeling that there and that can be a very Scorpio thing to feel both of those very intently but not necessarily let on right so feeling that Capricornian boundary but getting stronger though like Cardinal Earth there's some creativity here there is strength there's a there's a a maturity and I almost want to say um a strengthening of the nervous system more of an infrastructure to handle higher vibrational stuff because if it doesn't kill you it makes you stronger uh, so the divine masculine here the nine of blades so cr the criticism card here even if you think nine of swords right a lot of thinking like a lot like a real <laughs> focus now I cannot sense if these two know each other yet by what's on here, except that things are being revealed and to accept what is. Um, but this could very much be introspection. Right, we're looking at the yin energy, so yin introspection. But to the point of view of the Nine of Swords, that's very heavy. That's very intense, right? You think uh, Rider Waite, tech, oh, right? All those swords over your head, a lot on their mind. And that's why I feel like now this Peace Angel is very much for this, uh, right? That the Peace Angel acceptance is very much for both of them, but now I can really feel it leaning towards uh, the Knight archetype. Maybe they are already in that alchemy of letting go of an allegiance to a destructive ruler or principle. Remember, it can be an idea, right? Oh, God, what we've done just because of an idea. But also romantic delusions. There might be some getting back to the true nature here, uh, getting more grounded in oneself, but certainly uh, the angel is there maybe to help with that, saying that that is exactly what's needed because when you're really in your body, the mind tends not to run, but also keep in mind that critical can mean like, I hate to say critical care, or crit critical math, critical writing, critical anything, the detail of it, right? A very deep focus upon. So we'll keep that general until uh, we get, what is the root chakra of the relationship? What's going on here? Well, Ace of Blades, I would say that there is communication, but it's new, right? that th these two have begun communication. There is an understanding or a knowing of each other. And I can feel that, and, and absolutely, during this tricky time that we're in, this easily could be over uh, social media, etc. other means than face-to-face. -face. The thing is, the card is uh, the Sybil. The Oracle of Delphi, right? Breathing that green gas coming out the wall, right? Tripping on rock gas and making prophecy. I mean, the Oracle just didn't predict stuff. It gave prophecy, right? It's a very, very different thing. So think of that as the AIDS Ace of Blades, that kind of thing incoming, right? So it feels like the that there has probably been an introduction here. Um, but it's interesting, the Divine Feminine 
we'll see how how she responds outwardly, but but uh, kind of inwardly, it's it's scaffolded. That's the word I get. There's something mature about this inner child, which is why really, really important to get that this, that everybody has uh, not just a magical child in there, they may or may not, but the nature child, the wounded child, the, the orphan child, right? The divine child. I could go on and on and on. Read Carolyn May's Sacred Contracts. It's just easier. Oh, uh, God, there's so much. Let's see. What's the eagle eye view here? Oh, the Ace of Pentacles. Oh, the Ace of Pentacles in the Crown Chakra and the Ace of Blades in the Root Chakra, right? Isn't that funny? Because eventually it will be, whoop, there will be reversed, right? Because what's in the Crown Chakra, if it manifests, it will become in the Root Chakra. So right now it's all theoretical in that, well, theoretical thought-based, right? In the element of air. This could very much be new love. New Pentacle, unless it's a come around, which is true in soulmate contracts too. Uh, let's see. What is the initial outcome here? Ooh, well, the initial outcome is uh, the card of oppression, the devil card. All right. So um, this looks like maybe the beginning of a soulmate contract that hasn't hit its big obstacle yet. But when it's coming, it's coming. Um, uh, jinkies, right? But what does the peace angel say? It's like, you just accept this. Whatever you're feeling, whatever you're going through, right? And, and that things are being unveiled and, and the fears that might be holding you back, either one of these back. Oh, this extended is going to be a knockdown drag out, isn't it? Yeah, I can feel it already. Well, it's Scorpio. What do you expect? That's all right. I'll do it. I'll manage. Great. That's what we need. Another, uh, <laughs> not just another Virgo tarot reader on YouTube. Apparently there are billions of Virgo uh, readers on YouTube, but one that, like, works too hard and begins to martyr at the end of the day. Oh, dear God Almighty. This is really, really a very, very uh, clear thing here. I get the overthinking, right? The overthinking, if this is the... They're on their way to this. Now, can that be circumnavigated? I would say that you don't want to circumnavigate uh, the card of the devil in this card oppression, because it can be, from what I see here, at least from the masculine side, very thought-oriented. We'll, of course, be looking at that deeper... Uh, in the extended over on Vimeo, but right now it all starts with one thought, one thing in manifest. I'm going to say though, this might very well be worth it. At least the potential is there. I always get this image, they give it to me, that the Ace of Pentacles is, uh, it's an, it's an oak tree in potential as the egg corn, right? so much potential there, and I feel that. And like I said, there's something very romantic here anyway. Let's take it out of the word child. I know it's creepy. What, the magical innocence of your heart? Pick your words. And the knight archetype? Divine feminine? Divine masculine? There's just something fairy tale-ish. I mean, there's something fairy tale-ish about the knight, K-N-I-G-H-T, to begin with. Are you waiting for the knight? Oh, you will be there in his arms. <laughs> I just J-loaded myself. All right, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Let's keep going. We've got two more uh, uh, cards to hit the table. I totally just had a Katya moment. Great, now I'm a Katya channel. Hi, uh, Brian McCook, I love you. Blessed be. Should our paths ever meet, just know I bless your heart and soul what's left of it. Um, the Healing Mantra deck. Matt... Con uh, from the Ascended Masters, the only card they have in this spread, but they've got more that hits the table in the Extended. What is the perfect healing mantra for this? Because honestly, with the impression card, uh, there is a way through. There's always a way through. Just like if you think of the card of the devil, you know, the Rider Waite Tarot, the chains around their neck, they're loose. They can slip them off and walk away, but they don't, right? So there's an attachment. There's a it can be codependent. It can be all sorts of different stuff. But with a magical child and a knight, I mean, how could it not be a monster on the journey, right? Some fear, some dragon that has to be met and slayed. You know? And it's in between them, right? It's like literally, well, I'll, I'll pop it up at the end. I'll pop up the picture. So please breathe. As we need to ask the experts on this, my ascended masters of soulmate contract law, please. I need one card in clarity, if you would please, my beloveds, for the Scorpio Collective. Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus sign. Happy, healthy, wealthy, wise. Uh, satisfying, intimate, sexual, romantic soulmate contract with his magical child in this night, K-N-I-G-H-T, night archetype. 
uh, September 2020 are timeless. Really, the healing mantra that either one of them can use because, you know, I feel like she's got the fortitude there, oddly enough, that, 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 that this child has been, I guess, been through enough that has is willing to climb the mountain even if it is slow and steady wins the race, which would make sense with that friendship vibe there, right? The angel of friendship. Um, but with that Nine of, of Blades, that card of criticism, I don't know about this night. Is it going to be the Dark Knight? No. So please, what is the healing mantra that either of them can use for this? The healing, the moving forward of this soulmate contract, September 2020, or timeless. Discovering happiness. I allow myself to be content exactly as I am. Oh, you can't see that in this light. Uh, discovering happiness. It is this. <laughs> it is, it is, it is that. It is very much that peace angel acceptance. I allow myself to be content exactly as I am. Oh, we almost hit it. We're one page off. Uh, I allow myself to be content exactly as I am, the mantra for discovering happiness. When happiness is discovered, you are inspired, excited, and passionate about the gift of being alive. We have all been there right? There's a willingness to open your heart to the mystery of each moment, whether you're getting what you want or witnessing unexpected outcomes, which I feel like that's that card of oppression in that last position there. It's, it's an unexpected outcome, right? Uh, the discovery of happiness frees you from needing life to bring you more of this or less of that. The true joy of being yourself has dawned. This mantra is ideal for facing disappointment, developing self-approval, and feeling fulfilled. So there's, you know, that can just manifest itself so many different ways. It's like the, the I feel the overall archetypal thread throughout the quantum field, but the manifestations are near infinite, right? Like, that could be a health thing, that could be a money thing. Like I said, I felt very much there was this money wealth thing going on here uh, for Scorpio, very much that money, sex, power deal going on here, but maybe that's what's at stake for some of you. Ugh, it's, it's tricky, a lot of thought. I mean, a lot of people are worried about losing their wealth right now, so that could be something here that has thrown this a bit, but I get a really good feeling about that Ace of Pentacles at the top and this Ace of, uh, uh, Ace of Blades in the root. So discovering happiness, allowing yourself to be content exactly as you are, moment by moment by moment by moment, and I gotta say, I'm feeling that's much easier for the magical child than it is for this knight archetype, but get him in nature. See, that's what I'm getting there. I usually go with, oh, it's your true nature. This feels different with this divine mask, and this feels like get their feet in the sand or uh, get, get them in in, in trees, get them somewhere where there isn't so much electromagnetic static from devices and boom, different person. And that might be some of that oppression too. It might just be the impression of, uh, of just life right now. Particularly if you're Scorpio and you're empathic, divine masculine or divine feminine, doesn't matter. What are you going to do? You're going to pull one more card is what you're going to do. You're going to get yourself a Whisper of Love Oracle. Same deck, uh, sorry, same uh, company as the Blue Angel and Quan Yin. And uh, get yourself a little piece of guidance and grace from the higher selves of this knight and this magical child archetypal gestalt. Breathe. Hmm. That's very different. Please. I'm into this. I want to see, please, the, the higher selves of all concerned here, these two. One card in clarity for the Scorpio Collective. Sun, moon, rising, Venus signs. In this happy, healthy, wealthy, wise, intimate, sexual, romantic, soulmate contract for uh, uh, September 2020 or timeless. I feel the spaciousness of this. Please, one card in clarity for them both. A piece of higher self inspiration, information, and or insight for them in this soulmate contract that they may heal. One card. Two! Close! No, it's a card. Damn. Nope. Only take a one. Please. One card. We'll take it. I don't usually take... Let's see. Oh, it, all 
right. You're getting two. You're getting two. Okay, it's 14 cards. Practice compassion. Love makes the difference. <laughs> you got two. You got two. And it's not humidity. I had the air conditioner on before. Leaf blower. <laughs> not inside, though. Uh, practice compassion. See things from a different perspective. Love makes a difference. Love can help he heal past hurts and provide a sense of security, self-worth, and importance. Okay. Uh, there is an overall theme here that I'm going to hit. Uh, particularly with this idea that's here in acceptance and allowing myself to be content exactly as I am, along with uh, practicing compassion for yourself and another, and that love makes a difference. Uh, the oppression here that we're looking at at the center of this isn't just fear. It is collective fear. It's both of their fears and it's all of our fears. This is the point of a soulmate contract that as you heal yourself, not only through the quantum entanglement of soulmate contract, are you healing the other? So it doesn't matter who's doing the healing. It'd be wonderful if both of them did. It's okay if they don't though. But not only are they healing themselves individually and as a couple, they are healing the collective. And we are in a very pivotal place right now and love does make the difference. So think holographic. What happens in the, in the, in the individual happens in the whole, W-H-O-L-E. Uh, so let's pop up the, the, the picture. That's it. I mean, you got an extra card there. Yay. Uh, let's, uh, oh, they're coming right up my, to my door aren't they? with the leaf blowers. Please turn back. <laughs> That's fine. Nice deep breath. Magic clap. Because we have the magical child archetype here for the divine feminine, the shadow attribute, pessimism, depression, and disbelief in miracles, believing that energy and action are not required for growth, and growing into the light attribute of seeing the potential for sacred beauty in all things. And I think with that angel of nature that the knight is walking with as well, I think that she kind of sees that in him as well, that sacred beauty. Uh, the belief that everything is possible and walking with the angel of friendship here I feel like generally a friendly person like with herself as well and I think that's why she really does have that Capricorn there yes she might be being faced with a challenge here but there is a willingness and a friendliness the angel of friend of friendship sort of like helping her see this in a way that is uh, easier I would think or at least uh, friendlier to get her through we've got the divine masculine here the knight archetype, allegiance to a destructive ruler or principle, romantic delusions in the shadow, and really looking at the Nine of Blades there, there can be a lot of overthinking about what this is or what this isn't, and I think part of the delusion uh, in this case may be well-founded if he's afraid of being overwhelmed and hurt, because this is soulmate, not twin flame, but we'll keep going on that. He's uh, evolving into the light attribute, loyalty romance and chivalry, a love of honor. So for, you couldn't really, divine feminine, divine masculine, this is a very, very, uh, feels almost like a very old, ancient, but take it out of the age thing of child, right? Like this is not about children. This is about the innocent, pure heart within us before we are written upon and where that child is and the lead to gold balance. So there, you know, it is that magical child that believes in the kiss of true love, right? That it heals all things. It, uh, it, it, uh, breaks all curses or does it, <laughs> or does it right? Yes and no, yes and no, back and forth, back and forth. I can feel that with both of them here. Uh, and, you know, more is being unveiled, right? There's a big unveiling here, the dance of unveiling from Kuan Yin. Something is going to be revealed. And really, as that happens, the peace angel from Archangel Michael, just acceptance, like whatever you're feeling, if you need to cry, cry, if you need to scream, scream. But particularly, again, for that magical child could become childish, where the knight here, if it has not happened already, 
could get lured into their own deceptive uh, feeling here, uh, thinking here, and find uh, allegiance to a destructive ruler or principle here, rather than really sticking this out, doing the chivalrous, chivalrous thing, and discovering their inherent love of honor. Can this be dealt with honorably? Absolutely. But I would say even with that nine of blades that he's dealing with there, that there's enough introspection, right? There's enough of a focus. There's got to be some discipline with the intensity that I'm feeling on that critical thought right? That critical thinking, that though he may be shooting himself in the foot, that there is still that ability to focus in that way when things hit the fan, right? That that very much rallying and moving forward. Uh, and remember, they got the One of Blades here, so this might be very, very new, uh, or at least they're in such a new phase of it where it's practically like starting over, I'm getting, particularly because there's the Ace of Pentacles in the Crown Chakra, the Eagle Eye View. That just really says there's something brand new here. Um, you know, really looking at that Capricorn card for the magical child, I am getting that there is, she's been up this mountain before. I don't know with this knight archetype, but has is definitely seasoned and stronger than she lets on. And I think that's why she's got that angel of friendship there sort of guarding the way, saying, no, I know what my boundaries are. I, yes, I have hopes and dreams that everything will work out and, you know, rainbows and lollipops and moonbeams everywhere. But for right now, hi, let's go have coffee when we can be within six feet of each other right? And therefore that acceptance of it, right? This is a very interesting thing, but then to come to this unexpected disappointment, right? Well, I mean, maybe it's not a disappointment. It is the devil card. It's an opportunity, right? Um, to discover happiness, perhaps, using that mantra saying, well, then there are things oppressing us. There are things that are holding us back. Who doesn't have that? But remember, you're helping each other heal. So how you deal with it uh, individually is going to make quite the difference in how this plays itself out. Also, like I said, there's something global going on here, particularly with the messages from the higher selves. And I, I might say one is from one, one is from the other, because you got the two cards here. Love makes the difference. Love can help heal past hurts and provide a sense of security, self-worth, and importance. Now, that would be of immense importance to uh, the magical child, right? That sense of security and safety that the knight could provide through love making the difference. But for practice compassion, see things from a different perspective might very well be there for the knight archetype as well. To really see this differently about where your true loyalties lie and what is true romance and what is romantic delusion. Practice compassion. It's okay to be where you are. It's okay to be oppressed by thoughts and fears of the collective and not know it. It's okay to fixate and focus and be where you are because this is a soulmate contract. You are helping each other heal. But remember along the way, I allow myself to be content exactly as um, breath by breath, moment by moment, hour by hour, day by day, step by step in this soulmate contract for both of them heals not just one or the other and both, but all of us as well. Wow. They just sort of took over at the end there, didn't they? Well, that's a pretty Coca-Cola, if you ask me. I like these two. Yeah, there's definitely a hero. I mean, not the hero archetype, the knight archetype. They're different. Uh, but a hero's journey here, path of true love stuff, absolutely. So, uh, may the uh, Scorpio Collective, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus signs be blessed with all that they need in uh, this happy, healthy, wealthy, wise, intimate, sexual, soulmate contract uh, for September 2020 or timeless, that they may heal, that they may grow, that the things may be unveiled that needs to be unveiled, that they can accept with peace, allowing themselves to be content exactly as they am, with love making the difference as they practice compassion for their own healing the healing of the contract, and for the healing of all of us, for the well-being of all. So mode it be. And so it is. Uh, a preview is about to hit. I like to give you, you know, five, six minutes of the opening of the extended on Vimeo so you can see what are the next two cards that hit the table at least. So uh, thank you so much for watching. Please do like, subscribe, hit the notification bell, jump over. It's five bucks on Vimeo. No big deal, right? But uh, we'll exist there forever. You watch it as often as you like. I have everything set to unlimited views once you buy it. Cool, cool. Otherwise, wishing you the very best and the very blessed of uh, this really interesting soulmate contract. Good luck with that oppression card. It ain't easy, I know. But 
for now, my darlings, my Scorpios, hail, farewell, and blessed, blessed be. Collective Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus signs. Thank you for jumping over to Vimeo On Demand to get your extended reading uh, with this magical child and this knight archetype with that oppression card sitting in the heart there. Are you kidding? I got up, turned off the camera, turned it right back on, took a seat, grabbed the cards. Here we uh, go. This is definitely a story. It's got, I gotta say, sort of kind of like a fairy tale vibe to it with that magical child and that knight. Uh, archetype in nature, right? But friendship, it's, 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 it's got to touch Disney. <laughs> it's a little Disney-esque. So uh, let's clarify these. We're going to take uh, the mythic tarot, uh, which is uh, the voices of my gods, the divine masculine, to bring uh, some meat to the bones that we have here on this outline. We're going to start with looking at, uh, we've got the divine feminine magical child who walks with the angel of friendship as the Capricorn card, the king of, uh, well, the king of pentacles. In this, it's the crone of pentacles, the Capricorn card, uh, in relationship to this ace of uh, swords. How does she experience that directly? Uh, what is her her point of view, her take, her experience in, you know, the, the external world, the outside world, the yang? Take a nice deep breath. <laughs> yes, my gods, I feel you loud and clear. I feel you loud and clear. Every card that hits the table is being really guided by something very, very deep here in those in the know, and there is that energy, that feeling of wealth and support and strength underneath this all. So please, oh, that Capricornian, I got it. That's the Capricorn feeling. Please. One card in clarity. How does this magical child experience this one of blades through the card representing her of Capricorn? The Seven of Wands. Sure, it's a challenge. Sure, defensive. But again, I felt something very strong here about boundaries. So whatever is going on that's leading up to this card of the devil of the fear, she is moving forward. She is standing her ground, but she's willing to do the ups and downs, the ins and outs. And you know what? Like, I get the feeling that she's feeling like a good friend like that like i have to say i don't think this is naivete not boundaried right not with all that saturn energy it feels like maybe she'd been to hell and back right so she's doing this because she can right she has the strength to do that and believes perhaps in this connection in this person although it might be really really new in terms of that that uh that one of blades right it's something new and perhaps oh that means even that she might be a little like that too um, but willing to go through. Like, I feel both of those. I feel like one foot on the gas, one foot on the brake, as it is usually when you first meet somebody, particularly if it's been online, right? And that might be, like, the, the oppression that we're looking at there, we will get all this clarified, uh, but, uh, you know, might very well be a time and space, right? You know, distance between them. Uh, as so often happens on in the age of the interwebs. So let's look at uh, how this Divine Masculine Knight with the nature of angels experiences uh, this Ace of uh, Blades, this One of Blades, which does feel like a new communication, as I said, but mm, it seems to be more to it than that with that Seven of Wands. So please... My gods, how does this knight archetype experience the One of Blades, this new thought, this new perspective, considering they are in the Nine of Blades already? Please clarify the world. The world card is usually the conclusion of something very, very positive. So the, the immediate thing that when I went, ooh, was just like, this is over. I, that's maybe, maybe we will continue to clarify. I'm not going to leave that here, leave that there for this entire reading. But to say that the card of the world, there might be a piece of information here that completes a cycle that this one has been looking for for a while. And it does feel very information oriented, like a knight on a quest who finds a clue, who gets a piece of information. And maybe that's provided as the result of their initial communication or interaction. Well, 
we're just going to have to keep looking at that. What we're going to look at now is where how both of them, remember the Divine Feminine is the Magical Child and the Divine Masculine, uh, the Eight, sorry, the Nine of Blades. We're going to look at how, what, if they're even aware of what's going on in the crown chakra here, that there's something that wants to incarnate, right? That Ace of Pentacles. And it does make sense that the thought would prepay, right? It goes air, fire, water, earth, right? Thought, choice, desire, emotion, manifestation. Um, but that wants to come in. But, oh, oh my God, you can totally see, not only is there an oppression between the two of them, there's an oppression from this even coming into a physical form from the crown. So let's take a nice deep breath, see what the gods say.